What's up, everybody? Hi, hi. Good to see you all. Thank you so much for watching today. I'm just getting set up here. My name is Chris Gillibo. Um, this is all about finding opportunity in a time of uncertainty, uh, creating financial security for yourself, finding more options for yourself, being able to do what's more, uh, more of what's important to you um, through creating an income generating project. That's a lot of what I talk about on Side Hustle School. So we talk about it here today uh, in the context of my new book, The Money Tree, but also just more broadly uh, based on what's going on in the world. Uh, what are some things you can do uh, to feel more confident, uh, to feel just more secure in general. Um, so I'm so glad to see lots of our regulars here today um, watching on YouTube, on Facebook and Periscope. Let me know if that's you. And I'll say hi to some folks here in a moment. I've got a question for you today. I've got a giveaway. I've got some things to share with you about getting unstuck. Um, I've been hearing from a lot of people that are just kind of like plateauing in some way or they find it difficult to, you know, move beyond the first steps or they get past those first steps, but then they get stuck somewhere. Um, so I want to talk about that a little bit. And then I have a daily challenge. I think I was supposed to give you a challenge last week and I forgot. I was so excited. I got so, uh, you know, immersed in all the comments and such. So hopefully I won't forget today. Um, let's see who all is out there. Hey, what's up, Sean? Glad to see you here as always. Um, Delph is here as well. Good morning, Andrea. Hello, Rafaela from Atlanta. Very cool. Um, seeing some comments, seeing some questions already, um, which is cool. Dr. Sylvia, hi from London. Good to catch things, the show live for a change. That's awesome. Very fun. Allison, good morning. Yeah. Um, so if you're, if you're watching live or if you happen to be watching the replay, that's cool too. Um, do me a favor and click the little thumbs up button at the bottom. That's just shows YouTube that people like it. You know, people are actually real people are actually watching. Um, if you're watching on Facebook, you can do that on, as well. Periscope. I think you can send me some hearts. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel as well. If you're not subscribed that way you can get notifications if you click the bell. Um, whenever we go live. So we're doing this every Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Uh, Eastern, of course, different times in different parts of the world. Um, I'm watching from the Philippines. Oh, that's cool. Very fun. Marvin Joe, always good to see you. Hope all is well in Thailand. Christine, good evening to everyone on the other side of the planet. That's right. Hey, Christine. I think you said earlier you were in, was it Arizona? It's like 94 degrees or something there. Um, amazing. What's the topic today? Well, we're going to talk today about getting unstuck. Um, so I'll come back to that in a moment. Let us begin. Let's see what else did I want to share with you? I've got a bunch of stuff as always. Let's see a couple of slides here. Um, if we are not connected elsewhere, feel free to do that. Um, there's my various profiles, usually my name, but on Instagram, it's 193 countries. What else is there? Announcements. If you, oh, here it is. Sorry, I got multiple things going on here. If you have questions, um, I'm gonna play you a couple of questions here today. Um, if you have questions, you can leave those at sidehustleschool.com slash questions. We're gonna do live chat too, but sometimes if you have a more detailed question, it allows me to prepare and just kind of get into it. And I also use a lot of questions there for the podcast. Um, so just keep that in mind. We are also doing um, every other Thursday, I've been doing these Zoom meetings. Uh, based on the third way groups that I wrote about in the money tree. Um, so it's kind of like this, but a little bit more interactive in the sense that people can uh, you know, be on video and ask questions. We kind of go back and forth. It's all about helping people move forward with their next steps and such. Um, and so that was the sign up for that. I think I went kind of quickly there, but the sign up for that was um, aonc.co slash third way one. Um, yeah, let's see what else. Let's see a bunch of other folks coming in. Uh, Matt watching from Arkansas. Awesome. Nice. Graham in Canada. Hey, awesome. And Andrew in the UK. So uh, for those who are new here, I try to go back and forth between um, responding to the comments, uh, which I don't see all of them. So if I miss some of your comments, um, then it's just because I'm doing a few different things. Uh, but I try to go back and forth between that and a few things that I would like to share with you um, just based on what I've been hearing throughout the week, other different stories I've been featuring on Side Hustle School and so on. But as we get going today, let's ask the question of the day. Um, which is, what is your favorite thing about your city or town? 
What's your favorite thing about your city or town? People have already been um, posting where they're watching from. Favorite thing about your city or town? Let me know. Uh, yes, yeah, somebody said that link disappeared quickly. Let me see if I can put it back. Sorry about that. Let's go back there. There it is. Um, so let me know in the comments, what's your favorite thing about your city or town? Um, we're going to do a little giveaway. I'm going to pick someone and um, send them a copy of the money tree. Hopefully I won't pick the same person. Last week I picked the same person that I picked before. Um, and if you already have the book, um, that's awesome. Thank you for your support. Um, but this way you can give it to somebody else. You can give the other copy to someone. So if you are the winner, um, send a quick little email to Jed, um, J-E-D-D -D, at SideHustleSchool.com. Awesome. Let me know and I will go through a couple of those things in a moment. I saw this story. Let's see if I can put this up here. I saw this story recently. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, these two guys created a, a movie. Since no movies are being shown in theaters, um, at least in the U.S., probably elsewhere as well. But in the U.S., most movie theaters have been shut down or nobody's going at least. Um, so these guys created their own movie called Unsubscribe, which is a 30-minute movie that they made entirely on Zoom. And they basically found a way to like hack the system and get their movie into various theaters, which most people aren't going to see. But because most people weren't going to see, they were able to like rent out the theaters and do this promotion. They actually dressed up and went to their own little premiere. I think it was in New York where nobody else was there. They were the only ones in the audience. And because of all this, they got to be the number one movie technically um, in the U.S. last week because no other movies were being shown. And they had to fight for it because people are like, oh, it's a gimmick. Um, but I just thought it was pretty cool. So I wanted to share that story with you. That's, in, that's on the BBC. If you want to read more about that, just search unsubscribe movie. Um, so I thought that was fun. All right, let's see what we've got here in the comments. Um, oh, Charity says the book is amazing. Um, I'm a huge fan. You've read all my book. Thank you. That's awesome. I appreciate that. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. All right, so your favorite thing about different cities. Rachel says Cleveland has an amazing park system. Always easy to get into nature. Um, and Anil Kumar is watching in India. Vizag, I don't know that city in India. But your favorite thing is the people. That's good. Great buildings. Right now it's driving the PCH along the beach. That's, yeah, that's awesome. That's always fun. Aaron is watching from Singapore. Hey, what's up? Culture, food, and cleanliness. Yes, three good things about Singapore. Neil, access to the ocean and mountains around Vancouver. Hey, Nigel, what's up? Nigel lives in a friendly city with a great community and you have a castle. Yes, can't beat that. Can't beat that. Okay, um, let's pick a winner and I'm going to try to not pick the same winner um, as I have done before. Sharon says there's lots for kids to do in Swindon. Hector, what's up, man? Thank you. Good to see you as always. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I need to like have a master list of everybody I've chosen before. Cause we did 30 days of, of this before. And so now I've forgotten various people, but, um, I don't think we have picked, and I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Is it Rogel? Um, I hope I'm not saying that, that, that incorrectly, but in the Philippines that thank you for this comment. That's great. Um, we'll, we're going to send you a digital copy of the book. Um, so send a note to Jed and we will get that out to you. Thanks everybody else for all of your comments and such. Um, okay, so let's look at a couple of websites. I've been doing website reviews and features. I got a couple on Twitter today. Take a look at these. Let's see if I can find over that. Okay, so here we've got um, the first one is, I'm gonna actually go back here. The first one is Razan Raza. So RazanRaza.com. These two sites are kind of similar in that they are both blogs. Uh, they're both blogs, uh, somewhat based on personality, based on self-improvement. Um, the idea is like, I'm sharing lessons, I'm sharing some tips, um, you know, if you want to learn how to improve your life in various ways, um, then, you know, come and subscribe and check it out. So this is very similar to how I got started, you know, more than 10 years ago was writing a blog kind of like this. Um, so this is, uh, as I said, Rizwan, and he said this morning on Twitter when he shared it, he's like, I know I need to get a little bit more focused. And that's my, that was my thought as well. When I looked at it, um, I was like, it's, it's, it's a good, clean design. He's obviously got something to, to say, but you know, to become healthier, happier, and more productive, 
lots of different ways to do that. You know, what, what are, what are you choosing to focus on? Like, what is your message for us? That was my thought about this, but I love that he's doing that. And kind of the same thing here for the fitwriter.com, writing for complete fitness. Um, so this is a guy, is his name Jeff? Am I imagining that? Let's take a look at his about page. Just heard from him this morning on Twitter. Oh, Joel, excuse me, Joel, not, not Jeff. Um, so he said, this is a very new blog. Um, he's been, he's been working on it quite a bit, writing all these different posts. Oh, look down here. He's got a post about the money tree. Wow. I hope it doesn't say, I hope, I hope it says good things. You never know. So let's look at some of these, um, age is just a number. How to enjoy aging. What I noticed earlier when I was reading it's lots of, it's like long form content, which is good. He's actually got lots. It's, it's not just like a short little thing. Um, various points and such. Maybe the font size could be bigger just to be more readable. And then I thought on the about page, if you've been watching for a while, you probably heard me make this comment about other sites. I would love to know more about Joel because Joel's got this message to share. And here at the bottom, I don't know if you can see because I'm there. Let me see if I can take myself off. There we go. I'm gone. Um, writer and coach passionate about helping people. Um, it would be great to know more. Why, why is Joel a writer and coach? Why is he passionate about helping people? Um, you know, what is his message that he wants to share? Um, and all of that. So two fun sites, check those out from Rizwan and, um, Joel, not Jeff at the fit writer. Um, if you have a project you'd like me to take a look at, um, then usually every Thursday morning or Tuesday morning, I post on Twitter and say, send me some websites and I'll take a look and we'll share with our community. Um, you know, these videos usually get like a thousand views or a couple thousand views over time. Um, so hopefully it brings some exposure to them. And let's see, I want to talk today about, um, getting unstuck. So let me know if you have any questions about that. Let me know how you get stuck. Let me know what your strategies are for getting around it. I'm going to share a few things with you here and then I can circle back um, to the comments. Um, okay. So something that I've learned myself from, from a person who, who has frequently got stuck and, and has made a lot of progress on something and then kind of stopped at a certain point. Um, I I've learned that the points of stuckness, if that's a word, um, they're, they're somewhat predictable. So at least for me, I can kind of see, okay, I'm going to get this far in this thing, but then something's going to happen. Like if I think about my book launch recently, money tree, I was like, okay, I'm going to have a lot of energy for it. I'm really going to give a lot, but there's going to come up, become a point in which I'm just, I'm not going to be able to, I'm going to feel like what's next, you know? And I want to be able to stick with it for a long time because I think it's important. Like this is, I work for more than a year on a book. I want to actually support it for more than just a few weeks. So I, so I know that in advance, I know in advance, okay, there's going to come this time in, in which I'm feeling a little bit either discouraged or maybe it's not discouraged. I'm just like ready for something else. And I also know that like my community, they don't always want to hear about the same thing. And so I try to like, what can I do to keep it fresh? How can I continue to try to get the word out about something? Um, but you know, not in a way that overwhelms people or, you know, fatigues me. So I just want to be aware of that in advance. I think it's also good to like always know your next step. You know, if you can know the whole plan, that's amazing, but you don't always know the whole plan. At least I don't. So if you can always know just like, what is the one next step? Like if you're trying to build a website and you're, you're becoming stuck at some technical problem or because of content or because of marketing, or you feel like the audience isn't there, what is the one next step? Maybe not the thing to solve the entire problem, but is what is one thing that you can do? Right. So I did 30 days of this YouTube series. I, I really enjoyed it, but I also felt like I needed to make a change. And so that's why now I'm just doing it once a week. I'm still doing lots of other stuff, you know, but I was like, let me just go from this to like once a week, it will allow me to focus some time elsewhere and such. So always know your next step, whatever it is, even if it's just one step. Um, number three, impose an artificial deadline. I think this is very helpful, especially when it's something that you're trying to get out, you're trying to launch. Um, like you, you've spent a lot of time working on it. You've spent a lot of time thinking about it, but you're kind of held back from moving forward. So sometimes it's helpful to be like, you know, 21 days from now, this thing is going to happen no matter what. I might not be ready for it. Um, but at 21 days from now, it's going to happen. I'm going to share about it publicly. I might go and post on Facebook or wherever my, wherever I like to communicate, um, that, that, you know, 
in 21 days, this is happening. The next day, it's like 20 days, this is happening, 19 days, just so I have that kind of public um, uh, accountability. I'm seeing some good comments uh, from various sources, so I will come back and share those in a moment. Um, then another idea is to look for an alternative way forward. If it's something like if you're, if you have this obstacle, if there is a challenge in your way and you can't quite see how to like push through it, is there some other way? Like, is there an alternative way forward? Um, if you're trying to, you know, increase traction or momentum or followers on one platform and it's just not working, you can ask yourself, do I need to do that? It's like, is there, is there something different that I could do? Or if I think I need to have this prerequisite, do I really need to have it? Maybe there's some other, other way that I could achieve, you know, my goal without necessarily doing that thing that I thought I had to do. And then last, um, uh, if you've been watching for a while, you probably heard me say, I'm also a big fan of, of, of just stopping stuff and trying different things. And it's okay to quit something. It's okay to say, okay, you know, I did this for a while. And through that process, I have learned that I'm actually going to be better at something else. Or maybe that was just the season for that thing. And now rather than just like continuing to like beat my head against the wall, uh, I'm going to choose something different and put my energy toward that. Um, and that actually might, that might end up being more successful. And it also might be good for me because, you know, it's going to be more successful, but also like, I'm going to feel like re-energized um, because I'm focusing on something different. So those are some of the things that I try to do, I try to think about, you know, what is that alternate path? What is the, the next step? You know, is there some other way I can move forward? Um, is there something else I can do? Um, or is it just a, a, a case of, you know, I, I've, I've done this, done this for long enough. Um, so I, I think getting, getting unstuck is so powerful. I've been, the reason why I'm talking about this now and I'm doing some more research, this is just like preliminary. I'm trying to like explore it a lot more because I was talking with my, my publisher, like my literary agent and my editor for the most recent book. And one of the things we were talking about is, you know, I, I've written a lot of, um, prescriptive how to, um, in the, the world of entrepreneurship, you know, for, for 10 years, you know, I wrote a book called the hundred dollar startup long ago. And I wrote side hustle was the sequel to that. And then we've had this podcast now for 1200 days. And one of my favorite things out of this experience is all the different stories of people who are moving forward with their projects. And if you listen to the podcast, you know, like probably 20 to 30% at least of our stories are coming from listeners who have, you know, been part of the program for a while and then they've started their own thing. And so that's great. I love it. But I also think, like, okay, so it's great that those people do it, but for every person who actually moves forward and, and is able to, to, you know, make that progress, there's a lot of others who don't. And maybe it's just not the right time for some of them, but for the, for the ones who like, it is the right time and they're just stuck. Why don't they like, what is the problem really? And it's not just lack of knowledge. I think that's partly what I'm realizing is it's not just lack of knowledge because like the knowledge is not that complex. You know, there's something more that keeps people, that keeps people uh, for moving forward. So that's why I'm thinking a lot about this. So if you have thoughts on it, let me know. Um, I see a few different questions and comments. So Caitlin, Hey Caitlin, what's up? Um, just going to resize this a little bit. My question is I often get overwhelmed by having too many things I want to move forward. Um, how do you focus and decide what to move forward? Do you meditate journal? Um, I'm not very good with meditation. I respect everybody who's into that. I, I did a whole year of like of the Headspace app. I never really got into it myself. Um, I do journal a bit and I think the, the main thing is what was the, like, how do I, how do I focus and decide, decide what to move forward with? I try to do to, um, to mostly do things that I am excited about, that I am motivated for, that I feel like have some connection with somebody out there. It doesn't have to be huge. It does, it's not just about like what's going to have the maximum effect. Sometimes it's, it's, um, it can be like a deep effect with a few people or something, but I want to make sure that what I'm doing has some connection to that. So as long as I'm doing that, I don't get too hung up over the details of it. I don't get too hung up over like, what is the, you know, the optimal strategy? What am I doing like every single day for the next two years to accomplish this thing? I don't, I don't really think that way because, you know, again, as long as I feel like I'm doing something that's somewhat helpful to somebody, then that's good enough for me. At least that's a good starting point. I know if I build on that, that's going to be a good, a good, a good chain. Let's see here. The master gaster, how are you doing? Good to see you. Should I sell handmade crafts on my own website or direct people to an Etsy shop from my website? Um, 
I think you can sell them on your own site if you have a, a Shopify, if you have some process of doing that. Um, I think Etsy is great for like lead generation and reaching a market that is different from people who are coming to your website because probably a lot more people are going to Etsy than going to your website, which is true for just about everybody, you know, myself included. Um, and we've had lots of different stories um, on Side Hustle School of people using Etsy. And the ones who tend to be the most successful start with Etsy and then eventually do have their own website that they're trying to build more customer loyalty to. Because the problem with Etsy is like there's no customer loyalty. People are just buying something because it's a product that they like. They don't necessarily go back to that same seller later. Just scrolling a little bit here. Um, Delph, what's up? I love your avatar, by the way. I gotta get a kettle, gotta get a kettlebell. I haven't been doing strength stuff in so long because I can't get into gyms. Um, was there something you started in the past hundred days that you pivoted or moved on from chalking it up to lesson learned moving on? That is a great question. I would say, so the pandemic in general was really strange in terms of this book launch. And obviously this book launch is not the most important thing in the world when we think about the pandemic or about the social protests that are happening. And so I try to be clear about that, but nevertheless, like we're also, you know, each of us individually, we're all concerned about our own stuff too. So for me, yeah, with the book launch, um, well, I mean, the first thing was like, I, I was planning on going on tour. Couldn't do that. Um, then I started this series and it wasn't like this series was the total replacement for the tour. It was more just like, I'm going to do this and we'll see. I'm also going to, you know, do as many interviews as I can. I'm going to try to show up wherever I can. So um, was there something that I completely pivoted away from? I think, um, like over time after I did that for a few weeks, like I was doing four or five interviews a day and like also streaming on Instagram and also just trying to do that. It was good for a while, but then I felt like I don't necessarily need to do that all the time. Like I am an introvert, so it kind of takes a lot out of me to, to do like four or five hours a day of, of interviews and conversation. And so I began to get a little bit more intentional about that. Um, that's one thing. And then we also had like a little bit of a social campaign just with some advertising. And we did that in the beginning and we've, we've kind of paused that for now. It's a couple things that I think of. Progress over perfection, Charity said. Yep, agree. Christine, I fight the good fight against depression. Me too. Thank you for saying that. Depression and anxiety for me, uh, plus PTSD and sometimes health challenges. Um, I'm finding that habits, SOPs, standing, standard operating procedures keep me moving forward when I stumble. Yes, Christine has been through a lot, everybody. I'm so glad to, to see you here all the time. Um, it's wonderful. Um, all right. Oh, I'm all says you're my big fan following me since 2018. Would like to meet you. Love to meet you too. I have not been to India in quite a while. Um, let me know if you have any other comments. We're going to do a daily challenge before we wrap up. I'm trying to think what else I wanted to, to share with you. Let's see. We did the giveaway talked about, oh, we haven't talked about groups. Let's talk about groups. So I've um, been doing a few different things. Let's see, does this, if I do this, does something magic happen? Okay, yes, something magic happens. This is the Facebook group, which I've talked about before. We have a Facebook group for people who are interested in the third way. Um, third way is a concept that comes from the money tree. It's a group of people who are all trying to, you know, increase their financial security, um, start an income generating project without quitting their job, you know, without going into debt, all the things that I talk about on the podcast. So I've had that for a while, but um, we're starting something new. Let me see if I actually made this. No, I did not. That's a survey. That's, that's, you know, if, if you have a side hustle that you'd like us to feature on the podcast, that's where you go for that. That's a little bit different. Um, there was a different link that, oh, look at that. There it is. Wow. It exists. Check this out, everybody. So we're starting a pilot project, um, to do local groups in 10 cities. Um, we're going to do 10 lo local groups. Eight of them will be geographically grouped by city, and then two will be kind of floating for people that aren't in an obvious kind of city. And our goal with this is to do it for three months, and it will be very much like the third way um, in the book in that, that it's a very small group, and it's people who are committed to, you know, actually starting their project and actually like moving from, you know, zero to 100 or wherever you are to actually having that, uh, that project out in the world. So we're creating accountability. And at the end of this, I'm going to share uh, some of the stories on side hustle school. So this is, 
it, you know, it's not going to be for everybody. It's definitely for a small number of people and it's free just in case you're wondering, you're like, wow, small number of people. No, it's not that it's for sale. We just want to make sure everybody is committed. Um, so if you take a look at this page and read about it and see if it sounds like a good fit to you and it sounds like something that you could commit to doing, to showing up to the meetings and such, um, then there's a way to apply there and we'll, we'll choose a number of people. And, um, if you're, if we're not able to choose you, then this, the whole goal is for it to be a pilot project. And if it works well, then we'll be able to open it up more, more widely, um, in a couple of months. Glad I remembered that. Okay. So before we go for the day, um, and it's so good to see you all, by the way, thank you for coming. Um, lots of regulars and lots of, lots of new people I can see watching on, on YouTube. And I also know if, that we have a whole other group that watches after the fact. So if you're watching the replay, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, hit the thumbs up button. That would be awesome. Really appreciate that. So daily challenge, which I was supposed to bring to you last week, but I think I forgot. Um, if I, if you're getting this twice, I guess you get two of them, but I think I forgot. So daily challenge is, um, to cross three items off your to-do list without actually doing them. Okay. So it's not just like, I'm going to go and try to get three things done. Of course, you're going to get three things done today. Obviously you're going to get a lot of stuff done today, or if it's in the evening, then maybe tomorrow for you. Um, but like we, we talked about when, about getting unstuck, sometimes it's okay to try something different. I also think it's like one of the most productive habits you can have is regularly look, looking at your calendar, you know, and saying, okay, I, you know, I said I was going to go to that meeting or maybe somebody put that meeting on my calendar, but do I really need to be there? Or do I really need to be on that call or that zoom? Or here's all these things I wrote down that I thought I had to get done. You know, what can I take off? right? What can I take off that will then clear space for me to do something that's more important? What will I, what can I take off that, that will then allow me to work on my side hustle, to grow my business, um, uh, to do some, something personal, to do some writing or to do some, uh, whatever it is that you like to do, right? Think about those things that you like to do, whether it's work or life or, you know, combination of, of, of the two, and then look at your list and say, what can I take off so that I can do more of that? Um, that to me is one of my habits of like, regularly trying to go through stuff, my to-do list, my calendar, everything else, and, you know, just not doing those things. I think I mentioned, uh, at a recent, another recent, um, conversation that one of the most helpful things you can do when you commit to stuff, when people ask you, Hey, will you do this thing for me next week or a month from now or whatever is to imagine that they're asking you if you would do it tomorrow. And you know, if your answer is yes, I would do that, then okay, that's great. But if you think, no, I wouldn't want to do that tomorrow then that's probably a sign that you're not going to want to do it in a week or a month or, you know, whatever it is. And this is not just about when people ask you to do stuff. Um, it's also just when you're deciding for yourself, you know, should I go to this thing or should I, you know, whatever the commitment is, um, would I do it tomorrow? If so, great. If not, maybe I don't want to actually do that. Um, let's see a couple more comments before we sign off for the day. Graham, this is a good question. Um, I get stuck finding ways to talk to people in order to validate ideas, um, because I'm an introvert and I don't know many people. Um, how do you find good channels to approach? Yeah, that's good. Um, it might be helpful to, um, I'm not sure if you're in our, um, our third way zoom group, which is also free. It's open to everybody. Um, that might be a good thing for us to talk through then because then the group can actually give you some more ideas. It's a very introvert friendly group. Um, I say this as an introvert, um, I guess for me, like I'm trying to think like, so I know a lot of people now, but I didn't always know a lot of people. Validating ideas is interesting because, you know, if you talk to people, that's not necessarily validating your idea. Like the way that you validate your ideas, if, if, if you're selling something is that people choose to buy it at a certain point, it's not just asking them, like, do you think this is a good idea? Because that doesn't always get you the information that you, that you need. Um, but yeah, if you're, if you're not in that, that in our third grade group, join, join that. Um, like I said, it's, it's free. We'd love to talk about it some more. Willonius is WDS happening next year. Yes, it is. Um, WDS for those who don't know, it's my annual event, um, that I do every summer in Portland, Oregon, uh, world domination summit. It, um, it was supposed to be our 10th year this year. And like so many other things in the world, it has postponed. Um, but it is postponed, not canceled. That's the key word. So we are postponing to next, uh, to next summer. So end of June, 2021. And, um, the same is true with my book tour, although I don't have dates for that. Um, I'm hoping to be able to do some book tour events in the fall. 
um, coming up in a few months. Um, but obviously that just, that's contingent on the different situation in places. Um, but if I'm able to, if it, if it's safe and it's going to be different, in different cities, then I would love to be able to do that. So hopefully we can get a chance to hang out somewhere. If not, I'm still going to be here every Tuesday, um, hosting these conversations. Just reading a couple comments here. Is it okay not to have a side hustle idea yet? More of accountability and helping well. Sure. Of course. Hey, no pressure. No pressure, Delph. I know you have some ideas actually, but it's, uh, it's totally okay. You know, everything is okay. I mean, like this is your life, right? This is it's part of what I do is I, I'm trying to teach some methods and models. Um, but ultimately everybody has to figure out what works, what's best for them, you know? So I don't, I'm not a big fan of telling people what to do. Chavez, how do you deal with mental blockers like mind limitations? Um, so what is a mental blocker? I, I guess a mental block or a mind limitation is thinking that, you know, this isn't going to work or I'm not good enough or like, who am I to start this thing? Um, my recommendation is to start, start something, no matter what it is, start something, even if you think it's really small, just start doing it because as you gain experience, you're going to become more confident. You're going to have fewer mental blocks and you'll have more and more vision to do something that's bigger and better and beyond. Um, but it only, but it only comes when you actually start stepping out and doing stuff. Um, if you're just like thinking about it, um, then, you know, that's not going to happen. Okay. Caitlin says weekly challenge. Yeah. Well, it's a week. I, maybe I should call it a weekly challenge. You're right. But I was still thinking it's like today's challenge, you know, just happening once a week, but I don't know. I'll think about that. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Um, you're all amazing. Like I said, if I missed your comment, I will go back and read them all. It informs everything that I do, uh, in terms of preparing for this, in terms of other stuff that I'm working on. Um, we're doing this every Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific. Um, it's rebroadcast later, but I appreciate those who show up live. It's always fun. Um, just remember like whatever's going on in the world and there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. Um, you are not defined by external circumstances. Like there is something that you can create for yourself. Um, there is something that you can do. So be sure to take care of yourself, you know, whether it's through meditation, like we talked about or something else, um, take care of yourself and look out for somebody else. Um, and I hope you'll join me again next week. Thanks everybody. See you again soon.